I say, hey, yo, what's going diggity down? You're on the recovery pod. Okay. So the other day at work, I was just kind of in my head again, as usual. And I had just weird, I guess, weird memories of when I was using and um, a few occasions where I kind of would consider, oh, I guess they were spiritual awakenings in a sense where things would happen and I would convince myself that I needed to stop. And um, I guess, so one particular moment that that happened was I got in a, I got in a car accident and it was pretty bad. And after the accident, um, I just, I, I knew like I could have died and it was just super scary. And I, I told myself like, I'm never going to do this again. Um, I did end up relapsing, but I don't know. I just, and then earlier last year, uh, with everything that happened with that, um, I kind of had the same experience, but it was more. So last year's eye-opening experience was I, I was able to witness the damage I was doing to like my mom and people who loved me through their eyes and and witnessing it in uh, my ex, and it it freaking crushed me. It like I didn't when I was using, I didn't care about myself. I didn't think about anybody else, but when I was able to witness it in somebody that I cared so much about, it really like, it opened my eyes and just, I like, I could feel the pain that I'm guessing my mom felt and my friends and family were feeling for me. And it, it just, it kind of made me like, um, have a disgust for drugs like the first time ever i didn't like being an addict and it was super depressing but i did i was okay being an addict like and then when all that stuff happened it it made me have a serious like hatred for drugs and um so yeah that i feel like that was a dark night of the soul for me is being in so much pain seeing somebody else destroy their life and seeing and feeling that pain, um, it just made me not want to put that pain on anybody that I cared about through my actions. And yeah, the reason I brought that up too was when I was thinking about that, I was just, I don't know, I'm very curious to hear kind of what your guys' situation was or what your spiritual awakening um, moments were. Hmm. Do you want to take this one first, Anna? Sure. Um, mine was a little different. Um, maybe because I'm just a self-centered bitch. <laughs> <laughs> with other people. I wanted you to say it before I said it. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my issue was, uh, well, you know, you know what, Eric? I think you just did something here. Because uh, uh, when I got sober, or, you know, ever since I was little, like, I had a problem with, like, just feeling my feelings. I just completely shut them off. And even when I got sober, I didn't feel anything either. But um, I still wrote the steps kind of just like, it, I wasn't like, I was just writing things on paper that I knew that were logically facts but I never really felt them through. I never really felt, like you said, the pain of others and the pain of myself because I haven't felt anything. I haven't felt pain. I haven't felt love, I don't think. It was just some sort of like, yeah. So um, I, so what happened to me actually very recently, maybe a few months ago, I finally started to learn how to feel. Um, I allowed myself to feel feelings. And I start, once I did that, I started falling into this like really deep depression at at times when, um, so for me it was huge because I never really, I never really felt all those things. So after that, 
I started to think about, you know, other people and what I did to them. And I started feeling through all the steps that I wrote. Um, but the biggest thing for me was going back to the moments where I felt uh, like basically just traumas. Um, going back to the moments where those triggers came from and realizing why I felt these triggers and realizing why I, I am the way that I am. So I would basically almost relive the mo- those moments. And the biggest one for me was uh, my alone issue, why I couldn't feel why why being alone for me was so hard and so I ended up um one day I I just allowed myself to sit there and feel it I was I had to be alone and I just let myself feel it through and I just started getting flashbacks to that time when I was little so um which made me learn compassion for myself and it made me learn compassion from others I started understanding that every single person that whatever they do you know when they're whether the person is just really mean or cruel or if they're just horrible I understand why because of the things that have happened to them in the past and so that was kind of my awakening is just seeing people as just like we're all like connected and we've just all been through different things and there is really no such thing as a bad person it's just whether they're identified with whatever happened to them and they're still stuck in it and they're just not able to help themselves get through that um but yeah i feel like it's um i don't know much about the dark side of the soul part um from what i'm getting is almost like the other side of the coin type thing like where universe vibes man like what goes around comes around and i don't know if that's what you guys are kind of getting at but that's what i got eric when you were saying like you realize what you put someone through because of what someone put you through so it's almost like an exact scenario where you literally live and make that direct relation with something you did to someone. Because at first, maybe you didn't understand their side, but then you like live it fully. And it just puts this light bulb off where you're just like, holy shit, this is what they did? Exactly, because I'm getting it from someone else. And if that's what you guys mean, like that's kind of what I'm getting in a way. I've already talked about this a couple times and I feel I'm a firm believer, like, dude, like everything comes back. I mainly experience it in relationships, but maybe that's just because like, that's people I spend more time around, but man, like everything I've done has come back to me like 100%, even in recovery, like even things I did when I was using It's just something plays out very similarly where I am like faced with myself. You know what I mean? Like, damn, this is how that person felt because this is happening to me and this is how I feel. So it's like, to me, it's kind of like a, it hits two different ways. Like, I'm kind of like, damn, this hurts. But I'm also immediately like, damn. This is what I did. And there's a lesson, you know what I mean? There's like an epiphany kind of where I'm like, oh, so it it almost like, I don't know, for me, it like neutralizes. I mean, it still sucks when it happens, you know what I mean? Because I'm in recovery now and I try to do the right thing and it sucks having to pay for my old debts, but I do, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's it's great. I, I just think I'm more I think I'm more mind blown when it happens. Like, damn, for real? Like, how could this happen again? <laughs> like, I don't know. But it's pretty wild.
Yeah. Um, so with, I haven't really looked into the dark night of the soul concept too much. The reason I kind of thought about it with spiritual awakening is um, one of my friends uh, explained her experience as a dark night of the soul. And she explained it basically as um, just like where you're at in life. It's, it's so painful that the pain becomes unbearable and it kind of, it wakes you up or it opens your eyes or it, it forces you to make some changes that will get you in a better place. And um, so, yeah, with like the experience I had last year, it I feel like it was a, definitely a lot of karma in a way as far as like feeling the pain that I imagine my mother and family members felt with my addiction. But also it was the, what really did it too was um, the pain was so unbearable. Like it, it just sucked um, being that worried about somebody and then realizing that that's how people thought about me. And um, it's, I don't know, I got to a point with it where I was trying so hard to prevent those painful situations that I got obsessed with trying to control everything. And it just made, it made the pain worse because I was constantly let down and it got to a point where I don't know. I just realized that I was, I was part of the problem no matter how much I cared and wanted to, to help somebody. I was part of the problem. And, um, once I got to that point with just being in that much pain, I, I decided to remove myself from the situation. Um, and I feel like it, I feel like it was the, a good choice, like the best choice I could have made. But even now, like kind of with what we were talking about in the beginning too, is one of the worst things I have that pops up from my past is the guilt I have of that decision I made and I, I beat myself up and it's almost like I've convinced myself that I should have stayed and I should have fixed that problem. But the reality is I couldn't fix it. And it's, it's almost like I don't want to give up and I had to give up is kind of how I feel with that. And yeah, it's a crappy spot to be in. Yeah, man, that's like the insanity of the whole the whole game, man, like trying to fix what we can't, you know what I mean? And scrambling with like, how can I make this work? You know, like, what do I have to do? So for me, it's kind of I have to I have to realize what I'm focused on. And, and my focus is different today. Like at one point in time, pretty early on, um, my my goal was to get things the way I want them. You know what I mean? I, I want I want life to work in my favor and I want to figure out how to make it happen. And that doesn't mean like everything, but most things. And today I would like things to go certain ways, but my main goal is to stay peaceful and to find ways to grow. Like, so when the sky starts falling, shit goes left and doesn't work my way. It sucks. But at the same time, I, I understand now that things aren't going to go my way and that shit's going to happen. And I decide if there's anything I can learn from it, because there's not, not everything is a teachable moment. Like sometimes shit just sucks. And that's the end of the story. You know what I mean? There's not much I can do about it. But also for me, like, being able to keep myself at peace is another growing technique. So like sometimes when bad things happen, I just really try to like just staying in reality. Okay. This sucks. I don't like it, but if I can get to reality, that's a positive for me because even back in the day when, when shit happened and I didn't accept it, and I tried and tried and tried to get it to be different. I lost myself like crazy, like in the scramble. Right. And for me, 
staying out of that scramble state is what I need to do. And even if the rest of life sucks, if I can just keep myself out of there, that's something. So that becomes my goal when shit goes down. I don't know. I felt like I just made a whole lot of nonsense, but it made sense to me. That's the most important thing, right? <laughs> as long as you're speaking authentically. Um, I was going to say... I'm the only one who listens to this thing, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, like you said, Eric, the whole thing when pain becomes unbearable, that... I had two moments like that, and I don't know which one is the one, because... I had one moment during COVID when everything got shut down when I was kind of on the verge of, you know, I was disconnected from my feelings then. So I must have been on the verge of suicide or something, but I just didn't feel it through. But then I started to, I felt like I had no other way out. So I started looking way deeper into spirituality and things and believing in higher power much more. But then I also had the moment very recently when I did get in touch with my feelings and my thing isn't like Steven said, the whole scrambling around thing around like that's external trying to control things outside of me. But my issue was always trying to control myself and make myself be a certain way and scramble myself. And when I started getting hit with those feelings, They also made me want to (laughs) just jump out of my skin because it's like, I will never be like that image that I keep trying to scramble to be in my head. Um, So I would kept every time I'd be alone, I get faced with the thoughts of I should be doing this and I should be doing that and just set myself to the super high standard. that I could never ever meet. So now my goal is to just allow myself to be literally like nothing, like just allow myself to be exactly as I am. Whatever I do, whatever I say, whatever I feel, whatever I think, that is, I have to allow that. Like, because before it was like everything I had to reserve and make a certain way. And after that moment, after I fully felt those feelings all the way through, I realized there's no way I can escape myself. Like, this is right here. This is it. And, um, and I guess I kind of had a, an interesting moment happened to me the other day. That's well, that's actually yesterday. Um, it was me finally like getting in touch with my true self. Like I closed my eyes and I started typing blindly, whatever comes up from my, I guess you could say if it's not coming from my, from my thoughts, it's coming from my higher self. So it was like, I was communicating my higher self to myself So that was kind of a big awakening for me because I never had an issue with the outside world. Like whatever, I never had a problem with me like, oh, this is what it is, whatever. But it was always a problem with the way I, I just, the way I am with myself. So, and when I ended up reading that, it was really cool. It was like I finally heard myself speak and I can now allow myself to be so. I was just thinking, I feel like it's so crazy, right? That we can all come from different areas, have different equal opposite problems, yet somehow have the same thing in common, the same like side effects and the same solutions, right? Like you and I are completely different. Like we had, I had, I always had a problem with the outside world. Yeah. I've had some of my own problems, just like I'm sure you've had some problems with the outside world, but like your main focus is internal and my main focus is external. Yet we both went down the path of like trying to numb ourselves 
from our own thoughts. You know what I mean? Because my thoughts were my thoughts about there, but they were still daunting to me. And your thoughts are about yourself and how so many of these like recovery solutions work for basically like every ailment. You know what I mean? Like, what are you addicted to? Control? Like sex? You know what I mean? Like all these things, it's like really comes down to presence. And I don't know, for me, thought identification and presence. Like if I could pick two things out of the magic hat, that's my shit. I just need to be able to know what is a thought and what's not, or at least be be aware that they are just thoughts rather than having that one trigger thought that leads me down a deep, dark road. And I'm there. Like, I was never like, oh, how am I doing this person wrong? Or, you know, what's really going on here when I get angry and triggered? Like, am I disappointed? Am I like, you know, vulnerable and hurt? No, fuck you. I'm pissed. Like, you did me wrong and and my goal is to get you back. There was nothing else. And if I won, I'm happy. That's That's sick. Like... I can't even get there in my head anymore. Like, I used to like, uh, I used to just get so toxically driven off shit like that. Point of view, arguments, anger, you know, get back and, and really just be like honed in. Like, I have no idea what's going on. And not even like, I won't admit to you that I'm hurt. I didn't even, it's not even, I wouldn't admit it to myself. I didn't even know it. It didn't even cross my mind. Like, bro, is there something else going on here? What do you, you know what I mean? Because I was just conditioned that way and just so unaware of myself. But um, yeah, man, like, it's just crazy how so many people get brought to the same place to heal. And, and it works for everybody if you work it. You know what I mean? Like, it really does. Like, what works for me my number one tool may not be your number one tool, but we can all benefit from the tools. Like no doubt, you know? I feel so scatterbrained today. (laughs) You're fine. You sound good. Well, duh. I didn't say I didn't sound good. I'm just saying. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? so hey what's going down <laughs> <Guess there is. laughs> Again. no so i was just i was thinking a lot about what both of you said and it like steven it is crazy how just how we can all go to the same place for all different types of things going on in our personal lives and there is a solution and i like how you said the solution for you might not be the same for somebody else but the solutions are still in kind of like uh, the program i guess because for me it's for me it's really the being mindful a lot is what's helped me and um like eckhart tolle's book the things he talks about thought identification That's where it really clicked for me was just realizing like kind of that I was psyching myself out for no reason on life. And that was the problem for me was um, that it wasn't necessarily that there was a problem. It was that I was creating problems. And yeah, mine's, mine's a lot with external too. Like my whole life, I've always felt like scared of people or scared of groups of people for some reason me too um yeah and it i get super uncomfortable and my discomfort from that comes from i don't want to um come across as the fool if that makes sense like i don't want to be in a group of people and be the guy that like spills a drink and everybody laughs at so mine was always like i didn't want to be embarrassed so Instead of going in groups and like being social, I would just be a hermit at home and avoid that from being a possibility. 
I was always the weird yeah. one, like just sitting there awkward as fuck. Like I would just be there. Like, I don't want to be um, extra. Like I'm trying to be cool or, or just be like, um, I don't know. I would just overthink how weird I would look if I was being like outgoing, but I would just sit there and look awkward as fuck. And, and I would literally like damn near outer body experience. Look at myself. And be like, dude, you know, you look way more awkward and weird by just doing this. And I'm like, I can't stop. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get the same things you guys do. Like, I have, I, I'm also very scared of people. And if I really break it down to why am I so scared? It's because for me, it's the fear of abandonment. It's, uh, oh, it just broke would you stop hitting the mic? Jeez, that thing costs twenty dollars. It's more than I pay you for this whole podcast. You don't even pay for it. Uh. Um. Anyways, so deeply rooted fear of abandonment that if I do something that others don't want me to be do or be a certain way that others don't want me to be, I will be abandoned by everybody. And when I am. When I, I've started observing about myself in certain social situations, I started feeling myself slip into this victim mode where it's like, I know I could include myself. I know I could start sparking up a conversation with somebody, you know, the, the reality, realistically, I'm not that bad, you know, and, but I choose not to because I'm choosing the state to, just kind of be this loner so that somebody does come up to me and talk to me as a form of manipulation. So that's for me. And Mm. my thing with people is that I always take it upon myself. Like it's my fault that people are the way they are towards me. And I have a choice to be better. I have a choice to be social sociable because I've seen myself be this way around, like, you know, I've always had large group of friends that I would be around and certain ones, I I would be just always in the center of attention. But then when I get around to certain other groups, it's like, I know I don't have them under my control. I know that because I don't, well, I don't know if I can or not. Some people I do. I know they think that I'm funny and that I'm, you know, cool and but the the new people the people that i'm not quote unquote comfortable with i don't know where they are at in feelings towards me so um but yeah i definitely like it's it's just it's i know it's me trying to control the way i am it's me trying to not let myself slip certain words or act a certain way that some people might not think that I'm (laughs) cool or funny or whatever. But it's like, in reality, nobody actually cares. And it's not that big of a deal. And the ones that do care are the ones that have a problem with themselves. So that's not, if, if I do be a certain way, it's not my, it's not my problem. It's their problem. Because like, a lot of people really don't have a problem with it because they don't pro- have a problem with themselves. So um, when I'm sitting there reserved and quiet, it's I'm not allowing anything to slip. I'm trying to control <laughs> just people's view of me. So what if I just allow myself to be like I want to be? What will happen then? You know, and usually the answer is people will love me for who I am if I'm acting authentically because authenticity, no matter who it comes from, is beautiful. Our just true selves or true beings is good. Like we're all we're all great. It's when we try to be something other than what we're not is when people start to hate us and start to make fun of us. So but then there's another thing is whether or not you're going to give up the power to those people to allow them to make you feel like crap to you know allow them to just put your worth into that 
their opinion of you in the moment. So. Right. Like, I feel like there's so many layers to this thing, like all the ones you just said, right. But see, like in a social setting for me, I have like this double fear, fear of failure and fear of success. Like Hmm. if I'm liked and popular, I need to always feel liked and pop- popular. Oh, you know, I yeah. have to be in the mood to be this extra all the time. You know what I mean? And then add to it, you know, me wanting to be a certain way, me wanting attention, me wanting to be liked, me wanting certain people to have certain responses to me. Like that's everything I experienced in like elementary, middle school maybe even a little bit of high school. Well, high school, I was just full-blown ego mode because I moved to a different school and was popular and cute. And I don't know where that came from. But before that, I mean, like, overthought everything because I can't just be me because I probably would have fell in, like, a dork category. And I didn't want to be a dork. You know what I mean? And I had, like, these double personas because, like, at home, I I lived in a hood. So, like, I definitely wasn't, like, a hard or gangster one with them, but I was a little more rugged and different, but in school I'm getting like straight A's and I sit with nerds and we're all quiet, you know? So like, I didn't feel comfortable to be like loose and funny and carefree and all that in school. Cause I didn't have my people with me, you know, I, it was just kind of like on my own. And then I had to like really get to know someone to be my, comfortable around them. And then they'd love me. And then it was just like, bro, why can't you just be like this all the time? And then maybe I'd, I don't know, I would just never freely be myself. I'd try to be myself where I would say something that I would say, you know, and it comes out weird because I have weird intentions behind it. And then I'd feel like an idiot. And then, you know, I would just never talk again. I'm like, well, fuck, I'm never doing that again. Because, or maybe I was being cool and myself and some dude just wanted to be a dick. But I took him, I gave him so much power because I was just like, oh, well, you're so cool and I'm not. So in my head, I was just like, yep, never doing that again, you know? And I had a lot of that. So after a while, I just got to a point where I just didn't say nothing. I was like, it's better for me to not have the good in exchange for not having the bad. If that, you know, and I hated it, but at the same time, I got used to it, you know, and I don't know. I feel like there's just so much that goes on with shit like that. Like where I don't give a shit today. Like I I will be me if I'm stupid, if I'm annoying, like I can hone all that in, but it doesn't make me stop and say, I'm never doing that again. You know, I'll, I'll be a little loose. I'll be a little immature sometimes, but at the same time, like I'm just me, like I'm comfortable with being me. It is what it is. I can hone in inappropriateness. I can hone in immaturity. I can hone in being too serious. You know, I I feel like I've got a lot of balance, but it all came first with acceptance and honestly not giving a fuck because I can't please everybody. You know what I mean? And it's, it's such a, um, like a paradox because really when I stopped caring about what people thought, I feel like nobody has a bad opinion about me. I mean, who would have thought that all I had to do is realize how not special I am and how everyone's not thinking about me all the time to where if I say something stupid one day, oh, they're going to remember it next time they see me because they were thinking about it the whole time when we weren't together. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how I thought. I was like, dude, nobody's ever going to forget this one time you stuttered on a word. Like, you're just going to be known for this. Like, I don't know. What you said, Stephen, is literally like, that's totally how I feel with that whole thing. Um, like uh, one one story real quick. In high school, uh, I, I used to hang out with the nerds, but I also had a lot of friends that did sports and were popular. But um, one of my friend's sister's friend was a cheerleader and real cute girl. and. Uh, they told me she liked me and that I should ask her out. And I took her, so I took her to the movie theaters and the whole drive to pick her up, I psyched myself out. I was like, this is it. You gotta be like hundred percent. Don't blow this, you know? 
And the second she got in my car to the second I dropped her off, I think I said maybe like three words. Like I was a freaking mute this entire day. And it was probably so awkward for this girl. Um, but in my head, I convinced myself that uh, the less I say, the better, because I didn't want to stutter or say something like stupid. And I ended up, it was literally like probably the worst date, I think, <laughs> in, in the history of dates. It was I'm just laughing because so I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that I don't know why that that what you said just kind of brought that memory back up and um yeah it was awkward for me and i couldn't imagine her sitting there like we watched a a movie and yeah just sitting there for that long and i'm just like quiet i couldn't make eye contact and it was just super awkward but (laughs) yeah i like how you said um now you just don't give a fuck and what anna said too how people just they don't really care like they're they don't everybody's so focused on their their own lives that like they don't they're not going to notice and even if they do notice like some a word you stutter or if in my case like if i trip on something or spill something and make a fool of myself like sure they're going to laugh but five minutes later they're going to be thinking about what they're going to eat for dinner or when they're going to call their friend the next day like it's i don't know it's kind of like how you said we're not special like even if we make a fool of ourselves it's not going to be this thing this great thing that people remember for forever you know and um that's kind of how i feel about things now too with social settings is i still get the fear big time when i meet new people but i always just have to tell myself like there's going to be people that don't agree with me and don't like me no matter what. And I really have nothing to prove. Like if those, if people, if everybody doesn't like me, it doesn't really matter because like, it's impossible to please everyone. And I don't know, like, I just had to accept that everybody's, we're all in our own little worlds. And I don't know anything with that. It like, it makes no difference how I act to please people. Like as long as I'm myself, the right people are going to stay in my life. And I feel like that's more important than having everybody think you're cool, you know? Yeah. It's like that whole thing. Like you got to find your people. Like you can have everybody think you're like 10% cool and, and nobody really know who you are, or you can have like 10 people think you're a hundred percent cool. But like, man, (laughs) it's crazy. You brought up the dating thing. Cause like, man, that just brings back all the old times and like, middle school high school when I was just such a dork and like I I remember I had this girlfriend and she was like the new girl in school I was like eighth grade and she was hot man she was just really cute and she was new and I was I was sitting at the dork table just mute like me and this other dork were her friend and I remember telling him I thought she was cute and then he tells her and then she's just like well hey what's up and I'm like what like I don't know. So I, I dated this girl for, I don't know, two weeks, like a middle school relationship. You probably got to holding hands. I think I kissed her once. But it was just this like nervous, like weird thing. Like I think, I think alone we could probably, no, I don't think I ever like really talked to her. <laughs> like it was so weird. But just the whole thought process, like what do I say? How do I say it? Like, I'm so glad I don't got to live like Anna. You're so lucky that you're a chick, man. Like, I I don't know. Are you you kidding me right now? You're going to pull this card out? (laughs) Kind of. I want your I want I want your female perspective. Like, (sighs) do you also experience things like this where you're the nervous one going on the date or like because I feel like as a guy, we I don't know if it's just this like it, it doesn't have to be a guy or a girl thing. But I know I I always fell into that like weird, awkward virgin type vibe, like where I'm just like, me, I don't know what to say. Like, (laughs) so I don't know. What what was your perspective? I think I'm a little bit of a different case because um, I grew up, I had a lot of like group of male friends, like they, they would just like rip on me so hard. 
Like it was always just, we're just like making fun of shit. So it's like, I grew that. I don't know. It was almost kind of like a bit traumatic. So like, I also felt the same, like every time I'm around a guy, it's like, oh, if I say something, they're going to like make fun of me. And um, like, as fun as it was being friends with guys, there was also a level of that, you know, um, thing. I don't know if it's the same for guys being friends with girls, but I don't think girls would do that. Um, So I definitely, but I just, I don't know if many girls have gone through that, that they have that issue, but I can say a hundred percent the same way that I, I, I was very nervous to talk. Um, because yeah, but I, I just, I feel like it, it all comes down to power. Like it's, we give people so much power over us. Like we just, we let them, their view of us, their opinion, their feeling towards us, just like define who we are, define our worth and define like just wanting to be a certain way to control just how they see us. It's like, but then we take it back in this like really weird way by trying to manipulate. And I I, I feel like being, holding yourself back as a way of manipulation as well but that's getting really deep there (laughs) but that's it i feel like i had a thought and i totally lost it i'm like sitting here just staring at the wall like uh what was i just thinking uh i feel like i was like that with friends really bad like i already said this earlier but there's the thought process that goes behind it where if I know you, I'm comfortable with you, I'm funny, I'm outgoing, I'm just, I'm present, right? If I don't know you, and I still kind of get like this nowadays, but I also don't put myself in these situations anymore, um, at least not often, where I am, I just don't know how to be myself around new people. Like, if, if you put me with like three of my friends and stuck in one extra one, I'd probably be fine nowadays. But like, if you put me around four strangers, like, I'm not just myself. Like, I can be not a mute. I can do that these days. But I wouldn't go up in there, like, being all like, hey, what's going down? Blah, blah, blah. You know, like, all extra. And as I would around my really comfortable friends. So I don't know if that's like just a me thing or if that's how every, because I know some people who are like that. They're just like, they're themselves everywhere they go and i kind of envy that but at the same time i kind of like that i have multiple personalities right because like like my sister's friend she's cool she's herself everywhere she goes but like if she's around like my grandparents she's still like a foul mouth sailor who's all loud and extra so it's like there's gifts and and there's like costs and benefits of that to where I like that when I'm around children and grown ups I'm a little more reserved. You know, I guess I like when I'm around strangers that I'm not all out there wild and crazy in my form of comedy that may push people away and the, and the goal isn't to make them come closer or not push away. I guess the goal is just kind of being tame myself and I, I don't know, I feel like I just backtracking here but yeah, I just know I used to be really comfortable around my friends and just not comfortable around strangers. And I don't know if that's normal or if that's just me because I was all up in my head all the time. But I'm better nowadays. Like I can at least be normal around people. I'm 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 just not my ever present prime self, I guess. I don't know. I kind of do that same thing um, just with new people. Uh, for me, I feel like before it was just, I was just kind of, I don't know, trying to please everyone or just all the fear stuff with like the social anxiety that I had. And now I still do it with new people, but I feel like for right now, like I can still all socialize and talk to people that I just meet. 
but I won't. It's kind of like what you were saying, Stephen. I won't. I won't be my full authentic self when I meet new people. And for me, I just feel like I do that because I don't know. Um, it's kind of like how you meet somebody and you kind of get to know them, and that's kind of like my my breaking in period where I won't be my full authentic self because I don't know in my mind it's almost like I don't want to give myself away if that person's not gonna like if it's not gonna be a beneficial relationship if that makes sense and Mm. um but I've I've accepted that that's how I am and it I I don't know I'm not socially awkward anymore and I can I can meet people and if it's and kind of like I don't know. I can meet people and I can have a good conversation with someone. And if we don't mesh or we're just not compatible, it doesn't like, it doesn't ruin my day. And the other person's not like, they didn't just have like a staring contest with a mute. So like it, it works out. And then, yeah, I meet people that I mesh with and then I'll continue talking to them and slowly, but surely I get more comfortable where I kind of, let myself go and and be just authentic Um, but for me it's like a feeling out process now just kind of meeting people and seeing if if they're gonna be um i don't know just like compatible with kind of my beliefs and my personality that's a really good way of looking at it you're not just like throwing yourself out like that just to whomever i've never really thought of it that way i really like that i'm kind of for me i'm kind of a weirdo like i well maybe it's not weird but no it's weird what it's weird (laughs) you know what i i embrace my weirdness (laughs) i like it so when i meet new people If it's just, like, one or two new people, I'm fine. Like, I can be myself around them. Well, I guess it just depends on how the who they're affiliated with like if it's um somebody affiliated with my significant other it's like literally the hardest thing ever but if it's like i don't know why there's so much expectation there but if it's somebody who like literally anybody else like friends or school or work whatever it's fine like right off the bat but um as soon as i get into a group of people i'm not comfortable with My biggest thing always is my defenses come up. I get very tense and I am just ready to defend myself. I kind of just go into like the survival mode where anytime, like at any time somebody could start making fun of me or be mean to me and I have to be ready to just say something back to defend. Like I... It's like so bad sometimes. Um, It's like I start to see my vision gets clouded and I start seeing people as my enemies. And it's kind of scary, actually. But um, I'm trying to work on that. I'm at least like able to observe it. So. Yeah. Can I ask you guys a question real quick? What? May I insert another mind fuck here? <laughs> so check this out, right? <clears throat> what yeah, if yeah. when we're being inauthentic, we are actually being authentic? I don't like that. So here's the thing. When and I've had this thought a while back, and I don't know how solid I feel about it, right? I've just had this thought. When I used to be different ways around different people, right? When I used to be reserved, when I used to be in my head, am I not authentically being myself in those moments? You know what I mean? Or am I just holding up a image of what my authentic self is? And saying, I don't feel like that right now. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so I'm around some new people and I'm shy. Is that authentic? 
I'm authentically shy right now in this present moment. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just looking at that saying, this isn't how I want to be right now. I want to be outgoing. I want to be brave. That's just the same thing as saying like, well, I don't want to be a couch potato. I want to be an athlete. I want to be a celebrity. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's, I feel like there's a little bit to that where we're, we're holding ourselves to like a standard. It's like, why, why am I not always in the mood that I am in this photo? Right. Hmm. So am I not being authentic to my feelings of the moment? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I dig it, but go ahead. No, I get what you're saying. And I, 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 I feel like there's a baseline and there's some fear there. So if I'm not, if I'm letting the fear win, maybe I'm not being my authentic self because the fear's getting in the way or the overthinking's getting in the way. But to a degree, I don't know. I just feel like, like going back to where I say, you know, I can be this way around, you know, my, my smart friends. I can be this way around older people. I can be this way around kids. I used to look at that thinking, why can't I be the same everywhere I go? I'm not being authentic. I'm being fake. But that's not because I want to be reserved and watch my mouth and not tell dick jokes around my grandparents. You know what I mean? I want to not act like a straight, ignorant thug around my smart friends. And I want to not talk about fractions and equations around my gangster friends. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm letting different parts of me come out. And I used, I used to really be like, who am I? Like, wh- where do I fall here? And the truth is, I'm all of them. Like, I have multiple sides. And I have different hats to put on in different occasions. I can relate to different people in different ways. And I authentically choose not to hide these parts or put on a fake face, but to just only expose those parts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what I'm picking up that you're putting down is basically acceptance. Like, you know, you can't really change yourself until you accept yourself kind of thing. So by you know accepting that you are this way in these moments that's what's going to get you to improve yourself um another thing is it's kind of jumping from one extreme to another so like you're either super reserved or you're just acting crazy telling everybody dick jokes now you can be outgoing while not telling dick jokes you can be yourself you can be you know you can still make jokes you can still you know be happy and just let yourself be but you can put on that filter depending you know upon who you're around kind of like you know not talk crap about trump around trump supporters and not talk good about trump when you're around trump haters that is not gonna happen (laughs) Well, there it is. <laughs> no, no, no. So I, I get what you're saying, but that's not what I meant. I don't mean like I'm I'm putting on fake faces or I'm jumping from one extreme to another. I meant just more like I used to probably think of it that way. But I, I just mean more like picking and choosing which attributes to highlight and where. And really, it's not even like changing who I am. It's just having that filter. You know That's what I, mean? what I was exactly talking about. Was but you also said those. jumping to extremes and you don't have to tell dick, do- dick jokes or no jokes. And I'm like, well, I didn't quite say all that. So I just wanted to be clear. I was feeling a little ego defenses and wanted yeah. to communicate my feelings. Ego and... monster, peep. <laughs> you talk about my dick jokes, the ego comes out, all right? <laughs> you say the word dick and my ego is like, <laughs> what? Huh? Somebody call me? <laughs> yeah. 